Hello everyone, I'm Yvonne, a children's librarian here at the Manchester City Library, and I would love, like to welcome you all to Elementary Experiments Fall Edition, um, or to welcome you back if you were here with us during the summer. Um, here we will do experiments um, and activities aimed at um, elementary grades one through six um, with a focus on STEAM or science, technology, engineering, arts, or math. Um, with the school year starting, we know that everyone has a lot to do, uh, so we decided to post elementary experiments here online um, and then do them together in person on the very last Tuesday um, of the month at 3.30 p.m. at the Manchester City Library. Uh, so we will be posting um, two elementary experiments, one on the first Tuesday of the month, the second on the third Tuesday of the month, um, and then on the last Tuesday of the month, we will do both of those in person for everyone who um, would like to or can attend. So if you want to join us in person, please visit our website and register so that we can make sure that we have enough um, materials and crafts for everyone who comes. Um, we are going to continue to post here um, to share our crafts and activities with as many people as possible. But if you are in grades one through six and you like what you see, remember that we are doing that monthly wrap up in person on the last Tuesday. Uh, so now that we've covered all of that, let's take it in to this week's elementary experiments. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's elementary experiments where our theme is thanks for the food. Uh, so this is the third week in November so we are getting close to um, Thanksgiving um, where we usually um, sit around with friends, family, um, hopefully people that you love and we usually um, enjoy some good food and um, kind of are thankful for um, all the good things that happened during the year and um, sort of are hopeful um, for the upcoming year. Uh, so I thought that we would do some fun um, uh, sort of food related um, and sort of uh, Thanksgiving-ish um, activity and craft for this week. Um, so you might be excited that the first one up is going to be making some cinnamon slime. So um, go ahead and uh, gather the supplies um, that you need if you want to do it here with me now um, or we can just watch and run through and remember that we are going to be doing this in person on the last um, Tuesday of November at the Manchester City Library um, so if you um, cannot make slime where you are currently then remember um, if you're in the area and you are in grades one through six then remember to try and join us at 3 30 p.m on um, Tuesday, November 29th at the Manchester City Library. Um, and we will be doing um, this week's craft and the video that went out on November 1st, um, all that this month's crafts and activities then. Okay, uh, let's get the supplies and get started now. All right, so here I have all of my um, ingredients gathered. Um, as you guys may know, there are actually several ways to make slime. Um, the way that um, I'm making it today is actually going to be with uh, saline. Um, but in general, what we're doing with most slimes that we make um, is we have a borate ion. Um, in this case, it is on our saline and it is um, boric acid. Um, and we mix it with the um, polyvinyl acetate. Um, or the PVA glue um, to form our stretchy slime uh, through a chemical reaction um, that causes um, cross-linking of the polymers in the glue to link up in long um, repeating um, chains of molecules uh, that the borate ions, the borate ions um, connect together um, and um, make stretchy. So it's less like a liquid and more like that um, rubber slime that we so enjoy to play with. Um, so having covered that, um, we're going to start with our actual recipe. Um, so here I do have the PVC glue just 
normal um, white Elmer's glue. You can probably use other types of Elmer's glue, um, but this is what I have. Here I have some um, baking soda. Um, I have the cinnamon for our cinnamon slime. I do have some glitter that I am going to add just for fun. Of course, my um, saline solution that does have um, boric acid. I have my measuring cups um, and I have some water as well as my mixing bowl. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to find um, the one quarter cup, that is one fourth. And I am going to put one quarter cup of glue into this bowl. All right, and now I'm going to add some glitter and mix that in. Now, sometimes when you add ingredients does um, matter. Um, sometimes it matters more than others. Um, but if you add um, ingredients earlier, it does mean that they will mix more um, fully throughout the entirety of your slime. So if you try and add the glitter after you've added the, the saline or whatever borate you are using, um, then it's just not going to mix as well. So we're going to go ahead mix that up a little bit. And then we're going to do um, a quarter cup of our glue. We're going to use it to help get some of this extra glue out of my container. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix that together. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get my cinnamon in here. Okay, so for your cinnamon, you're going to want to go and find um, a tablespoon. So um, it's with the B, so it's going to be this, the tablespoon. And we're going to put one one half, well, one half to one tablespoon. Um, I'm just going to do one. Okay, and I'm going to mix this in. Um, and it is, it is a powder, so um, I'm going to be gentle when I start to stir. Because if I stir um, too hard um, with it being a powder like this, it's just going to like fly into the air um, and not mix in the way that I want it to. So we're just going to this all together. Okay, so once I've got that um, pretty well mixed together, I'm going to go ahead and find um, the one quarter teaspoon. And we know uh, what the one quarter is from our one quarter cup. So we're looking for the one quarter teaspoon now. All right, so that's that little one. Okay, so we're going to add that into our mixture. Going to mix that up. And now we are going to want um, one and a half teaspoons um, of our saline solution. Um, so we have one teaspoon here and we have a half here. Um, but because I want to get less measuring spoons dirty, I'm just going to take the half teaspoon and I'm going to fill it up with saline three times. Because um, if we have two halves, that's going to be one whole and then we're going to have one more half. And all together that is going to be one and a half teaspoons. All right. All right, and I will say that um, the saline slime that I've been making, um, I do find that it is usually a little bit runny with this recipe. So um, adding a little bit more saline solution um, and possibly a little bit more baking soda 
um, usually helps with that. So we are going to see if it will. All right, so um, I have gotten my slime to a consistency that I am enjoying. Um, so I did end up adding, um, I think about another teaspoon of um, saline and of baking soda. Um, but I'm actually going to um, make sure that I have my altered uh, directions because like every time, every time that we um, make something, every time we do science or um, cook food or make slime, um, we learn new things. Um, and so I think I've definitely improved this recipe um, from previous times. So I'm just going to go ahead and update that. Um, so the original, um, so the recipe that you would have seen at the beginning of this is going to be a little bit different than what I actually did. Um, and I'm going to put the recipe up here again, um, just to make sure. Um, but honestly, I'm really enjoying this slime. Um, though I have made saline slime before, this is the first time making this recipe. Um, and I really, really like uh, the cinnamon slime. It smells um, pretty good, um, which sometimes saline slime smells a little weird, but the cinnamon makes it smell super good. Um, it has a cool um, visual texture with the cinnamon and the glitter I put in, and it is definitely uh, slimy enough to enjoy. Uh, so I hope that your slime turned out just as cool as mine. Um, I hope the, the directions um, end up being a little better, and um, I hope this wasn't too confusing. Um, but remember, if you weren't able to make slime um, here or at home, um, then uh, we are going to be making this um, really cool slime um, in person um, at the end of the month. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and um, clean up my area, which is, of course, always an important thing to do, um, and get ready to show you how we're going to do our craft this week. All right, welcome to our Thanks for the Food craft. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed because I turned away after my introduction. Um, but my beautiful pin right here is actually what we are making for our craft today. Let me give you guys a closer look at it. So we are going to go ahead and make um, these pixel art turkey pins for our Thanks for the Food craft. So um, pixel art, um, as you may have guessed, um, takes its name from the pixels that make up um, the screen of um, a television um, or a computer or a phone. And the more pixels that you have, the more realistic um, your image can look, right? So um, anymore, um, computers and televisions have like so many pixels uh, that it looks like um, I could be sitting there right in the room with you. Um, but some, um, especially older games, have a lot fewer pixels. So that means that um, in an image, um, every square um, that makes up the image, every single pixel um, is bigger. And everyone who was making video games um, at that time had to be very careful in how they arranged their pixels because they had only so many pixels to make an image. Um, so with us here making our um, um, pixel art turkey pins, um, we have a total of um, 11 um, pixels across this way and then a maximum of 11 going down. So um, the turkey pin on our instructions already has um, how you should um, arrange the colors on the pins to create the image of the turkey. 
Um, but you can also think about how you would create your own um, pixel art, either on pins like this, or um, just if you were going to make pixel art. Um, even if you have ever done anything with like perler beads, that is also a type of pixel art because you have like a limited um, number of rows and columns that you can put specific colors onto. Um, so if you guys have graph paper or if you make a paper that is full of squares that is the same size as each other, then you can actually design your own pixel art um, and just by paying attention to um, how the size you can make a pin pixel art or the plans for a pin pixel art um, or something for perler beads or something like that um, in the same way. But like I said, because we want to be able to give you the kits um, to take home and try out, um, we did decide that we were going to give you the correct amount of beads and pins to make this pixel art turkey. Um, and you guys can explore further on your own. So in our kit, we are going to have our instructions. We are going to have um, a pin that um, I have already slid the um, 11 pins you're going to need onto the back. So if you look at this, um, to do this, um, just starting with plain pins, um, you would have to kind of open this spring here a little bit. Um, and that is quite tricky. Depending on your pin, it can be really quite difficult. Um, so if you are unable to get a kit, but you still want to do this craft, um, I would definitely say you do need some adult supervision um, because you are going to need an adult to use um, either a butter knife or a pair of pliers. Like I personally had to use a pair of pretty heavy duty pliers to um, get this little spring open enough to slide the rest of these on. And also I had to be careful that they all faced the correct direction. Um, so that when you wear the pin, all of the beads are facing the right way when you wear it and you don't actually accidentally see the back of the pin. Um, so that's just some like words of warning if um, you're going to try this completely by yourself. Um, like I think that's really great, but I do want to make sure that you um, have um, enough help to do it safely. Okay. But if you do have our kit, uh, then this is already prepared for you. And then if you look at the remainder of our beads, there is going to be a baggie full of beads. Now this is our brown beads. We couldn't find beads in the correct size that were um, like a very dark brown. So these beads are actually more of um, kind of a rust red. And I did put them in a bag separately so um, you wouldn't mix them up with just the plain red beads in with the rest of um, the beads in here. Hopefully that makes this a little bit easier. Um, and of course, if you do need help with the colors, be sure to ask um, a friend or family member um, because it's a really cool craft and they probably enjoy helping you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to start here on the left and we're going to open the first of our pins um, and we are going to follow the instructions so pin one going from left to right um, you are going to put on three white beads and then seven red beads so we're going to do one white, and honestly putting these beads into like a small little bowl is probably the best idea because you do not want to lose them or they, you don't want them to roll away. I am going to not be the smartest and just put them on my table and hope that I don't knock them over. So we've got three red beads or three white beads. Okay so this is the first row and we've got three white beads and seven red beads and 
it should still close. So if you see there, we've got our first pin done. Now we're going to go back to the directions and we're going to go to pin number two, which is the next one here. And we're going to just again, follow what it says. So first we're going to put two white, then one red, then three yellow, and then three brown from our little bag. Okay, there we are. And then we're just going to close it. Then we've got row two already done. And we're just going to repeat that all the way across. So there we have it, our pixel art turkey pin. They should hopefully look the same. And then because all of the pins are on the other side of the um, spring, uh, you can then open the top pin and carefully put it onto your jacket or your shirt. And then wear your pixel art turkey pin um, for everyone to admire. And that is uh, the end of this craft. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that maybe it's given you um, some more ideas about how to use pixel art um, out in the rest of your life. All right, so that is all for this week's elementary experiments. Thanks for the food. Um, I hope that you enjoyed our sort of uh, food um, Thanksgiving inspired um, activity and craft. Um, I do want to remind you guys yet again, um, that this is the last elementary experiments in uh, November, which means that um, we are coming up on our last week in November. Um, so that Tuesday, um, November 29th at 3.30 p.m. Um, in the Manchester City Library. Um, we will have our in-person elementary experiments we will, we, where we will do um, this activity and craft as well as um, the previous um, elementary experiments that we did in November um, activity and craft in person um, with craft kits available. So please, um, if you think that you would enjoy that um, and you're in grades one through six, go um, to the Manchester City website and go ahead and register just to make sure that we have enough um, kits prepared and enough um, glue and other things for our activities um, enough so that everyone who comes can enjoy. Um, as always, I will have a list of um, books that sort of center around food if you thought this was really fun and you want to um, read a little bit more, um, all of these are going to be available at the Manchester City Library. Um, so go ahead and look and um, either grab it or put a hold on them. This is also um, the last of our official fall set of elementary experiments. Um, so the first Tuesday of next month, we are going to be um, kind of getting into a winter mindset. Um, but besides that, there's not going to be much change in elementary experiments. We are still doing videos um, on the first and third Tuesdays of the month, and we are still going to be doing um, in person um, on the last Tuesday of the month, where we will do our previous activities and crafts um, in person with everyone who can attend. Um, so I hope that uh, covers everything that we need to talk about. I hope that you've enjoyed. I know I had a ton of fun, especially this week. Um, so I hope you did too. Um, but besides that, I hope I will see you soon. 
either in person at the end of the month or um, back here again next month. So until then, bye.